Hey, I'm Caramel, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at Days Gone on the PS5. What was originally a 30 FPS PS4 game is now on the PS5 running at 60 FPS, doubling the frame rate through its backwards compatibility mode. And it really is a transformative experience compared to the PS4 version. If you're not too familiar with this game, it came out in 2018 as a PlayStation exclusive, a big first party game by Sony, and on the PS4 Pro it showed off their 4K checkerboarding uh, technology, which is a way for games to pretty much be 4K. It's like super close to 4K, but not actually, but it's really hard to tell the difference, but it's not as demanding as running it at an actual real native 4K. But if you're playing the game, you can't tell any difference. It just looks like 4K. So this game was a big showcase for that technology that they were implementing. But I think it's fun. I didn't originally pay attention to it when it came out in 2018. But I've been enjoying my time with it now. And I thought it'd make for a good video because it really showcases what PS5 backwards compatibility can do. So let's get into it. On the base PS4, the game runs at 1080p. And as I said earlier, on the PS4 Pro, the game uses checkerboarded 4K rendering which is basically 4K. It's a really good looking game, and because of that it ran at 30 FPS on the PS4 consoles. But what the PS5 does is, through its backwards compatibility mode, boosts that frame rate to 60 FPS. And it's, it's an entirely new experience. It's so much just smoother to play, and everything feels way more natural and fluid. It really changed the game. I don't think I'd be enjoying it as much as I am now if I was playing it at 30 FPS. The game features really long draw distances, tons of lush scenery and foliage and plants in the environment, and it also has these big huge hordes of zombies, that's what they call it, hordes of zombies, that run around the world and they create one just big huge uh, mass of zombies that are really hard to take down. The entire open world feels really connected and everything feels supernatural, like you'll be riding around on your bike which is a uh, main part of the game, you use your bike for transportation a lot, and you'll see like a big horde of zombies attacking a deer in the wild. And you can choose, um, maybe you can try to take out the horde of zombies while they're distracted, or you can say, nope, uh, not today, and just keep on going. Occasionally you might come by uh, survivors that are like trapped in cars by zombies, and you can choose whether to help, help them out or not. The game has lots of story and plot, and features characters that aren't the nicest people, but they definitely are likable and they have their reasons for what they do. And the, the level of the storytelling is up there with the Uncharted and Last of Us games. And this game does have some extra touches of detail in it that make it feel kind of next-gen, even though it is a PS4 game. But it does some cool stuff that I really enjoy and I find really cool. Like, uh, when you kill enemies, mostly humans, their bodies stay there for a long time. Like, they don't, they don't disappear until you move really far from the area for a long period of time. It is really impressive. Also... You'll see a lot of this footage. I have like blood stains on my back. I got shot at a point and just like a normal combat situation. And the blood stains didn't go away until I um exited uh, the game like a few hours later. It was really impressive. Normally blood stains go away like um, faster than like no longer than a minute. But this game, they're there for so long. And I could see that probably bugging some people. But I thought that was really cool because I've never seen a game do that before. All of this means that there's really no way the game could have ran at 60 FPS on the PS4, not with like all the stuff happening in a big open world. But on the PS5, now we can experience it at 60 FPS, and it is pretty smooth for the most part. Uh, you will need a few dips in the frame rate every once in a while. It mostly happens when you're traversing the world with your bike, and maybe you're going really fast, and uh, the frame rate will dip a little bit i think because the cpu is struggling to stream up all the assets and the open world that's coming up ahead of you um i think if they did even though it's a cpu problem i think if they uh reduced the stress on the gpu and maybe instead of having it 4k maybe add like dynamic resolution it would probably hang around like 1800p i think that would fix the dips but for, for the most part it's pretty good that you there's just a tiny bit, bit of dips every once in a while Sometimes you'll see when you meet one of the big hordes of zombies, because that's also another CPU-intensive thing, having all those zombies uh, collide together in the environment. 
but it is pretty much just 4K 60 gaming. Uh, it it is almost locked. Very smooth. It is pretty crazy how you're getting uh, 4K 60 gaming with this level of graphics and a $400 console. I think that's pretty impressive. I don't think there's any PCs on the market that can play games that look as good as this at 4K 60 for only $400. So it's pretty impressive what the PS5 is squeezing out here. Um, there are those tiny dips every once in a while. But I think if they just uh, lower the resolution a bit, maybe they could have like a resolution mode that makes it 4K. And then a frame rate focus mode where it has like a dynamic resolution. I think that would help it and uh, allow the frame rate to be locked and never budge. The loading times are a bit improved. Uh, they're not really that huge of a difference though. Uh, because this is a backwards compatibility game. And backwards compatibility games can't tap into all of the power of the PS5. Especially not its SSD, which would really help out the loading times. It's still kind of treating it like an HDD hard drive. When you're doing some of the story quests and they want to transition to cutscenes, the game might take like uh, 7 to 10 seconds to load. Uh, loading the game up from the main menu takes maybe like 10 or 20 seconds. Though, I will say fast traveling is really fast. It's like there's almost no loading screen at all. It's really nice. I didn't notice anything strange or anything unusual in the game that wouldn't happen on the PS4. I didn't see any problems caused by backwards compatibility. There were like the occasional one-off bugs, but I think that's stuff that would still happen if you were playing the game in PS4. I'm sure the game would be even better if they made a native PS5 port for it that doesn't run on backwards compatibility. It would be able to take uh, advantage of the PS5's SSD. I don't think that's uh, what's happening though. This game definitely is coming to PC, so I'm going to be interested in those comparisons between the PC version and the PS5 version. And also, I think the, the studio is working on Days Gone 2. That's uh, definitely been flown around the internet. I think that's everything uh, you should know about Days Gone on the PS5. It is really worth your time. I think it's a pretty cool game, especially because Last of Us is my second favorite game ever. And this is basically just open world Last of Us. So... I'm loving it, and it's great to be playing at 4K 60 FPS. I would just um, maybe recommend to developers that they have a, maybe a, an optional mode that puts the resolution down just a little tiny bit to help the CPU out and um, uh, smooth out those tiny dips that happen every once in a while. But other than that, it's a really great experience, and if you enjoyed this video, uh, leave a like, subscribe for more PS5 backwards compatibility reviews, and I'll see you in the next one.